Good evening, everybody. Welcome inside the James T. Ashley Gymnasium here at Diamond Regional. Girls basketball on tap tonight on Fred TV. Evan Massoud with you as we are just about ready for tip-off. The Blue Hills Warriors making the trip down 24 to square off against the Bengals. Blue Hills coming in at 8-8 eight and eight on the season, led by head coach Tom McGrath and the Bengals at 7-11. and 11. Led by Shane Doyle. Now, um, as we get ready for the opening tip, you know, that 7-11 record, not really indicative of the way Diamond's season is wrapping up. The Bengals, right now, according to Coach, at 4-2 and two in the conference in the Mayflower League, and uh, they are in the midst of a three-way tie to get into the tournament, and Blue Hills is part of that tie, and uh, Tri-County as well. And interestingly enough, tonight is the Blue Hills matchup, and on Friday, the regular season finale, the Lady Bengals will be hosting Tri-County. So uh, they really control their own fate here. But Coach is very confident that uh, after what was a very slow start, tough start for the team, they've really turned it around once they got into tournament, uh, excuse me, uh, conference play. And uh, that these Lady Bengals should get into the tournament this year. And uh, so we will keep an eye on that next Thursday during the February vacation week. Thursday the 20th is the cutoff for basketball in the state so that there can be no more games past a week from Thursday, uh, which means that tournament pairings will be coming out. So, uh, you know, we invite you, if you don't follow us, please get on Facebook, like and follow us at our Fred TV Sports Facebook page. We'll always have the tournament information. All these games get posted there as well, but uh, especially during tournament time, it's the best place for you to find out where everybody's going to be playing. Uh, there's not going to be as many qualifiers this year in Fall River, um, you know, especially with you know the two Durfee teams really struggling, Durfee hockey really struggling. So, uh, not looking, not going to have anything for the Hilltoppers in terms of the playoffs. It's very rare to not have at least one Durfee team in the tournament. It has not happened in my eight seasons covering. So, um, this is going to be a a rare, a rare. Um, miss for Durfee in the tournament. But Diamond with a chance here, as are the boys. The boys really, ha you know, they've had a tough season record-wise, but again, you know, th they've got a weak conference this year, and uh, the Bengal boys may actually have a chance at getting in as the second qualifier via the conference. So, again, we'll keep an eye on that as well. Uh, Bishop Conley boys, they are in. We already saw them twice this season on Fred TV. So, um, we will keep an eye, though, of course, as cutoff dates get closer. Two minutes in here and we are still scoreless at Diamond. Let's run down the starters. For the visiting Warriors, starting five. Number two, Tia Cumberbatch. Number three, Nisa Lewis. Number five, Shania Watson. Number ten, Isabel Bear. And number twenty, Jamelia Ross. For the Bengals with possession now. Almost stolen. Two freshmen on this starting roster. Starting five. Uh, and they are the first two names here. Number four, Hannah Martin. Number five, Avery Rounds. Number 13, Annie Codega. We'll see our first foul. Number 20, Selena Mendez. And number 40, Jenna Medeiros. And uh, nope, they did not call a foul. I believe it was a jump ball. So Diamond with possession. And they'll look to cross half court. JV with a big time win for the Bengals in the uh, game before varsity here, 52 to 18. We got here in the third quarter and Blue Hills only had three points on the board, so it was a very long, long game for Blue Hills to say the least. Tough game for JV Warriors. So Diamond though with the JV win, varsity looking to do the same, and again, this is one of those, not so much a, I guess you could say a must win, you know, Getting so close to the tournament here, and, and they're in it. So um, better to get it out of the way now than to have to wait till Tri County and really be in that must-win situation. You know, you got the cushion of one game. Get it done tonight. They've already beaten Blue Hills once this season. Good feed as we're still scoreless, almost halfway through the first. Will this be the first basket? No. Ross can't get it to go. Bengals traveled to Blue Hills back on January the 24th, and they won it by 8, 52-44. That's a three, and that's no good. And their first game against Tri-County was 
uh, the next game, Wednesday the 29th, and they lost to Tri-County. So Tri-County's got the, they have the win in the first game, 36-31, very low scoring game. Our first foul of the night will send, uh, no, actually not going to take free throws. It was on the floor. Foul was on Nisa Lewis, number three for Blue Hills. Diamond inbounding, they get it in. That one goes for three. Hannah Martin knocks it down almost four minutes into the game. Again, a slow start offensively here for the Bengals and the Warriors. That one out of play, an errant pass. And Diamond will take it back. That one wide to the right off the glass. The rebound going to Mendez off the foot of Cumberbatch, and she'll take it back the other way, looking for a lane. Nice defense from Diamond. And Mendez is able to stick the hand in there, jar it loose momentarily. Ross with it back, though, kicking it out. And that's a three for Lewis. So Diamond and Blue Hills trade threes here. And we're knotted up. We try to do once a year, we try to do uh, an all student broadcast here on Fred TV. We, we did it last year and um, it's something we had wanted to do prior to last year. We finally did it last year with uh, our video club. This year, um, just a mix of students from TV1, TV2, and TV3, so up and, down the, up and down the line there. So some students with not much experience and some seniors who have done a lot of games with me this year. So, um, And it was a lot of fun. Got to have uh, you know the kids directed. They ran camera. We had a student broadcast crew, so I put the headset down for a night and kind of ran a supervisor at the site. So a lot of fun. We did that uh, on last night, Tuesday, this week for the Durfee girls game against Bishop Stang, the senior night game. So um, good group of kids this year, as we always have. We always have a good group of kids, but particularly a um, lot of our Fred TV students wanting to get experience and work games. I've had really over a half dozen different students working games versus, you know, maybe just maybe three or four. So more students this year than in past years, which is always great because uh, we do cover a lot of sports here. At least I try to. We did two dozen games in the fall. That was a lot of games. We, we really got in a lot of games this fall. And this winter shaping up to have about 20, which is good considering I missed a week with the flu. <laughs> it was not a fun week. I certainly would have been rather doing sports. But you got to roll with the punches. That's life. Turnover. Uh, right before the timeout, Ross put it in for Blue Hills there for her first basket. So 5-3 to three the score as we're rolling up on two and a half minutes here in the first. Ross putting up a three. Looks good. Just off the front of the rim. And blue ball. It will be Blue Hills ball. Uh, the official yelling out blue. Inbounding back to Ross. Thought about taking it. Instead pulled back as uh, Codega was coming in on it to defend. Out of play. And now white ball. Diamond will have it. And talking to Coach Doyle before the game. Always one of the most positive, happiest Coaches, whenever I see him before a game, always with a smile, always excited for the game. They actually had warm-up music, which he decided to pick. Now he says, I need something to pump me up and the girls, so we're going to get some loud rock and roll in here. It felt like a football game. Nice job by Madeiras to keep that in, and Diamond gets the basket out of it. Kodiga drops the floating pass, the floating shot, rather. But uh, 
yeah, it kind of felt like, uh, you know, fall football out at the field here with uh, some of the rock and roll that was going on. Jump ball, that's a pretty quick whistle on the jump ball because uh, the steal was pretty quick there. Weren't working at it too hard. Diamond will keep it nonetheless. Little kiss off the glass for Mendez, and the Bengals lead again seven to five. No good. As Cumberbatch took the outside shot. Blocked down low. High bouncer who wants it. Fight for the ball. And calling a foul on the floor. Second foul on Lewis. Must have been something from behind because uh, you could see Maya Lateo for Blue Hills kind of in a jump ball grab with, with Diamond, a couple of the Diamond girls. So uh, I thought that's what they were going to the call was going to be instead. It ends up being second foul of the game, and it's on Lewis. Now the third foul on the game will go Diamond's way. It's going to be their first. And it's on number five. That's rounds. Under a minute here in the first. Very fast first quarter. These games tend to move very quickly here in the Mayflower League. And they just play the same number of minutes as, uh, as we do over at Durfee, but these always tend to move just a little bit quicker. Rounds passing to Mendez. Mendez takes the shot from the, just inside the free throw line, no good. Bouncer, oh, trying to keep the foot planted. She does, just barely getting that pass off. 15 seconds, Diamond will take it back the other way. And it's Martin, Martin loses it. And it's a, Two girl break down the court and no, Cumberbatch can't get it to go. One second, she'll take the Hail Mary shot. A little sloppy there at the end. Diamond should have had that last shot, but hey, good defense for Blue Hills. They were able to get there in time, but a very low scoring first quarter all around. Seven to five after eight minutes of play here on Fred TV. And just single baskets. for the five girls who have scored to this point. Cumber, uh, excuse me, Lewis with the three for Blue Hills. Ross with the basket, the field goal. Martin with the three for Diamond, and then Codega and Mendez each with a basket of their own. So a very slow start offensively for the Bengals tonight and the Warriors. We'll see if things heat up a little bit as... Um, the game goes on again. You know, Diamonds passed 50 points out in Canton during the uh, first matchup. And we will see if the offenses can make some more shots here. And it appears it will be Cumberbatch inbounding. She'll be sending it to Ross. Second quarter underway here. Evan Massoud with you on Fred TV. Mayflower League basketball from Diamond Regional. Bad pass, tipped, and it goes right to Kodiga. Oh, Kodiga was looking to pass down the court to Madeiras, breaking into the paint, but she didn't see it in the pass. A little too strong, would have let her out of bounds anyway. And so, Blue Hills ball. That's a foul. Diamond's second foul, and it's going to be on Mendez, her first. And we'll see our first free throws 
of the night as Cumberbatch heads to the line for two. First one good. And this second one for the early 7-7 tie. Does she make it? Yes, she does. Both shots. So seven all here as we 30 seconds into the second quarter. Lady Bengals sporting some new uniforms this year. Very similar to years past, but kind of a different font. Three ball is good from Cumberbatch. And a five nothing run to start the second quarter. Keep that foot down, almost. Madeiras almost with a travel. Basket put up, no good. Mendez with the rebound, passing to Madeiras. No good again. And now the Warriors coming away with it. Good feed down the court. That was beautiful, but unable to put it in is Nature Fry getting her first minutes of the game. That's a tough shot from Mendez. And a jump ball. Good. Give her credit, though. Mendez was able to put that shot in basically over a wall of Warriors. There were three of them right there. Outside shot, and it's good from Rounds. We're tied at 10. Second from downtown for the Bengals tonight. Pressure in the corner here. And the Bengals steal it away. Took it right out of Lateo's hands. And he'll take it the other way. Diamond going to pick up foul number three. Out of play it goes. Jumper rattles off the rim, no good. And the wow. <laughs> And that's out of play, it's not gonna count, but I don't know if they could ever plan that if they wanted to. Hit the strap and then ended up falling in. That's pretty good. that's pretty crazy. Two shots. Second foul on rounds for Diamond and Cumberbatch to the line for the second time this quarter. Three for three so far. That one does not go. And a jump ball. Getting tangled up there was Watson. And it's gonna be Blue Hill's ball. Nice pass underneath. We're going to have another foul. Diamond racking them up quickly here in the second. Fifth foul. Just one in that first quarter. And it's going to be Mendez second. Both coming here in the second. 
and Cumberbatch back to the line again. That one's short. Rebound to Diamond. Two misses, so after hitting her first three, Cumberbatch has missed her last three. 50% at the line. Passing back, and another jump ball. This time it'll be Diamond's ball. Nice set up there, the inbounding pass, Kodega breaking toward that 15 foot line, ended up taking it about 10 feet from the basket. Three for Cumberbatch, good from downtown. Man, she's having a nice second quarter, nine points for her. And it's 14 to 12. Travel. Wide open on that left side is Cumberbatch again. No one defending her. Oh, that's a beautiful pass. Doesn't go. And Diamond picking up their sixth. Not a whole lot of contact there. At least it didn't look like. Erickson. Her first foul, number 11 for Diamond. Two shots here for Bear. And the first one is good. I think it's a 15 to 12. That one no good. Diamond hasn't been able to go to the free throw line yet because Blue Hills with just two fouls here through one and a half quarters. Well, there's some contact there. I'm surprised that didn't draw a whistle. As uh, Watson kind of bumped Madeiras on her way to the basket. Third foul for Blue Hills. Fries first comes there down on the floor, so no free throws or anything for Diamond. Passing back, that's back court. Not a good pass there from Rounds. As Kodiga couldn't get stuck. If she hadn't gone for it, it would have been stolen by Ross, so she had to go for it. Good take to the basket, doesn't go. Another foul, wow. That's seven. Erickson, her second, and now one and one. Well short. Jarred loose, Madeiras picks it back up, hands it off. Three from the corner, short. And Cumberbatch with the rebound. And Blue Hills with a couple players that are taller than all of Diamond's team, so the rebounding and the reaches like that can help. Another three from Cumberbatch, her third of the quarter. She's got 12 points, 
of the 13 that Blue Hills has here in the second. If she wasn't on the court right now, it'd be a different ball game. And it's forcing Coach Doyle to call timeout. 2.45 to play in this half. 18 to 12. The Warriors with the lead. Bengals need a bit of a run here offensively as they come back from the timeout. Really haven't had any solid trips down, down the court. Ball's getting tipped away. Some bad passes, some bad shots that weren't really close. So it's been really a tough uh, first five minutes of this second quarter for Diamond. And take the shot well long, but there was... Erickson, and she's going to go to the line and take two shots. First trip to the line for Diamond here in this half. And it's going to be Fry picking up her second foul. The team's fourth. Two shots for Erickson. And first one's good. Both shots, good. Not very high arcing free throws. More of a line drive, right? It just finding that sweet spot in the basket. So two good shots there for Erickson. Good rebound there for Blue Hills. Got it back. Really doing a lot of that. Wow, how about the flip from Ross? Almost got it to go. And a foul. Watson's first, the fifth for the Warriors. And two shots for Avery Rounds. First one, no good. Second one, no good either. Chasing it down as Perez keeps it and stays inbounds. One heck of an effort there for Hannah Perez, who just came into the game. Three ball, lets it go, and it's going to bounce around the rim. Perez with another rebound, but then it gets tipped away to the basket, goes bare. She loses it, and now Rounds will take it back down the court this way. <laughs> back and forth we go. Bad pass, cut off by Watson. She's got height, and she is fouled. And a little bit of a fist pump, a little celebration. Not sure that's really necessary on a rather light foul first foul on Perez Diamond's eighth two shots here for Watson and she missed the first pull shots miss Uh, 
Out to Perez. Another bad pass. Final minute of this first half, kicking out to Ross off the back of the rim. Who wants it? And Diamond comes away with it. Wow. Martin had to kind of leap for it. Almost tipped away. I'm not quite sure where Rounds was passing that one, but there was nobody close. Really tough pass there for Rounds, 22-14. And Diamond looked to try to have the last shot here. Another bad pass, three seconds down the court, breaking, and Blue Hills can't get it to go. Bear cannot do so, really not a sharp quarter by any stretch for Diamond. A tough, tough first half really offensively for the Bengals. Uh, Blue Hill seems to have figured it out a little bit thanks in, largely in part to Cumberbatch who ended up with 12 points in that second quarter. She's got 12 for the game but to have all 12 in that second quarter I mean that made a huge difference because just one other player and it was Ross uh, seconds ago put in the, the field goal. She's the only other warrior to do that in those last eight minutes in the second quarter. So um, Bengals really got to figure it out. Just 14 points here through two quarters. They got their work cut out down by six at the half. We'll step aside and we'll have the third quarter next on Fred TV. You're going to see some middle school basketball highlights during this halftime break from Durfee as the boys and girls of Fall River Public Schools squared off for the middle school championships. Those are actually going on right now as well. So uh, we have our Jake Fitzgerald over there. I'll be meeting him for the second game as soon as this one gets done. So enjoy some highlights from Durfee. We'll see you for the third quarter. Hello, my name is Laura Ferreira, the Director of Traffic and Parking. During a snowstorm, your safety is our first priority. At times, a parking ban may be necessary to ensure access for emergency vehicles and to allow plows to clear streets. A general rule is park on the side of the street opposite the fire hydrant. For more information, please visit our website at www.fallriverma.org and search parking ban. In addition, you may call the mayor's office at 508 324-2600 or the Office of Traffic and Parking at 508-324-2123. New England weather can be unpredictable. Notification of a parking ban will be made early to give residents the opportunity to move their vehicles. Thank you for your assistance and cooperation. Welcome back to the broadcast. Here are the middle school basketball championship highlights you've been waiting for. And I'll tell you, on Wednesday, it was one of the biggest crowds we've seen here at the Luke Urban Fieldhouse this season, and it wasn't even for high school hoops. The boys would play first, the Talbot Tigers versus the Henry Lord Bulldogs. Pick it up in the first half, Jameer Stevenson tries to go baseline, he puts it up, no good, but Devon Paradise there for the rebound and the basket drawing the foul as well. Bulldogs lead early, nine to six. We'll skip ahead now to the second half, under five minutes to play. Josen Sanon, full steam ahead, kisses it off the glass for the bucket, an impressive drive. It's a four point game with less than four to play. Next possession for the Tigers goes badly though. Ja'Cory Ross steals the ball, takes it back for the score, patting the Bulldogs lead. It's 43 to 37, time is running out. That's all Henry Lord would need as it became the game of fouls in the final 90 seconds with Jameer Stevenson nailing free throw after free throw to seal the victory. The Bulldogs take the city championship in boys hoops over the Talbot Tigers, 51 to 44, the final score. On to the girls now, the Cus Cougars versus the Morton Mustangs. Both teams in the huddle and ready 
to rock and roll. First half highlights here, Maggie O'Connell with the ball, finds Alex LaPointe down low, able to roll it in to open the scoring. It's 2-0 Cuss. A little later, Mustangs showing off the passing game. Caitlin Cucci to Maddie Hargraves to Harmony Caraballo. Great ball movement, good for two, and the lead. It's 4-2 Morton. Cuss not letting up, though. O'Connell sets it up again, this time to Maya Jacob. Selfless basketball, and the Cougars cut it back to 6-4. to A little later in the first, the Hargraves to Hargraves connection. Maddie with the steal and cross-court pass to Julia, who banks it home to make it 8-4 to on a flashy play. The game would go into halftime tied at 10. Second half would be low scoring, but neck and neck as well. The Morton Mustangs outlast the Cuss Cougars to take the girls' city championship. 20-18, to the final score. After the break, we head back to Diamond for the second half of girls' high school hoops. Mayflower League action between the Bengals and the Blue Hills Warriors. Stick around. Check. Rosalie. It's critical that your child is in school every day. Our teachers care about your children. I care about your children. Equally, we know that you care about your children. We know that when students are in school, it opens the door to college and career in ways unmeasurable. Look, I know sometimes it's hard to get to school, but you gotta be here every day. As a parent, if you need help, we want to help you. These guys are the best. Our teachers do an amazing job building relationships. Look at the work that they produce. School is fun. School is cool. We need you here every single day. Got to be here every day. Welcome back, everybody, to the James C. Ashley Gymnasium. Evan Massoud with you on Fred TV for girls basketball. We are underway here in the third quarter, 20 to 14. Blue Hills with the lead. Diamond trying to put it up here. Uh, excuse me, Blue Hills rather trying to put it up here. Could not do so. Diamond back down the other way and the three ball is missed for the Bengals. Diamond's uh, shooting was wasn't even so much the shooting in that first quarter, just really struggled um, really even possessing the ball. Blue Hills defense seemed to get a little stronger in that second quarter. And um, you know, there were a lot of turnovers for the Bengals. Bad passes, Blue Hills, again, you know, size-wise a little bigger. Huge three right there from Ross. And that puts Blue Hills ahead by nine, but you know, again, you look at size on the court here, and Blue Hills definitely has the advantage. So they're towering over the Bengals, and then their arms are getting, you know, they're able to spread. They got the wingspan. So they're blocking a lot of shots, or passes even, and, and kind of taking it back, forcing those turnovers. So that's half the problem. Um, a jumper is going to be no good from Watson. So. You know, for Diamond, it's it's gonna, gonna be they got to do something differently offensively to try to figure out where they can find some room here. Some contact there, going to the basket, but no whistle. Ten on the shot clock. That never hit the rim. That's for three. Does hit the rim this time, but the rebound goes to Cumberbatch. Long cross court pass to Bear. It's broken up and it goes out of play. Tough shot, how about that from Watson? That was a very difficult shot, and she makes it. It's an 11 point lead for the Warriors who really want this game. Oh, and it does go, Ross puts it down. Ten point, um, nine points for Ross. It's a seven nothing run to start this third quarter for the Warriors. 
not what the Bengals wanted. Already down by six to start it. Basket is good there from Kodega, her third. She's got six points. Wide open for three. Good. Cumberbatch did that in the second quarter. She burnt them three times, uncovered just like that. Bengals got to do a better job defending her. Otherwise, she's going to continue to do it, and the score is going to balloon on them. 30 to 16. For full game coverage here in winter sports regular season, this is actually um, our last here in the city, today being Wednesday. Um, Thursday, tomorrow, we're not doing the production, but uh, New Bedford Cable Access is covering the Durfee Boys game at New Bedford, the rematch from a couple weeks ago. And you may recall, if you saw that broadcast, that we had Chris Santos join us from NBCN. And... Um, you know, Chris invited me up to join their crew for the rematch, which is hosted by New Bedford. That'll be tomorrow, so I'll be hitting the road tomorrow. And uh, we will air that game here in the city, so you'll get to see it. Um, but it's not our own production here, per se. So um, production-wise, this is Fred TV's final winter sports production, winter sports game of the regular season. Again, I hope, um, I'm sure the Bengals do as well, um, we hope that the Diamond Girls and possibly the Diamond Boys get in another three for Blue Hills, and they're really nailing the downtown shot. Ross with her second this quarter. Were well, they giving her just the two on that? I thought that was for th that was way out. Only counted it for two. So 32 the score, not 33. Ross could do nothing with it this time. She was falling out of bounds. <laughs> Tipped away by Martin as Ross was breaking. Basket good. Perez takes the three, it's off the mark. Ross will take it back. Three on two for Blue Hills. Drive in the lane, floats it up, and it goes. So it was Cumberbatch in the second quarter. Now here in the third, it's Jamelia Ross getting it done. Unofficially, by my count, nine points for her in this quarter alone. 14 for the game. Jumper good for Madeiras.
Coming up on final two minutes of this third. And man, it's been a very quick third quarter. Zero fouls for either side. A rarity in any high school game. Loose ball picked up as uh, Jacqueline Pierre couldn't pick it up. And now we will see our first foul and it will be on the Warriors. Be on Watson, her second. And it was on the floor, so no free throws. Godega looking to inbound, kicking it out near us to Martin. Martin puts up the floating shot. The put back though, good for Medeiros. Yeah, final 90 seconds. Diamond's gotta close the gap a little bit here. They, and they have, you know, it's 14. They gotta get it under 10 here before the uh, third quarter if they can. Timeout called by Coach McGrath of the Warriors. Of course, we will have a full plate of spring sports coverage as well here on Fred TV, as we always do. Looking forward to getting back outside. We've had barely no, barely any snow this winter, and um, needless to say, as somebody who enjoys the snow, I hope that the snow doesn't like start going crazy in March when you know baseball and softball need to get outside. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll see what happens, but. Uh, Definitely looking forward to getting back outside. Of course, we'll have boys volleyball at Durfee as well. A reach in, oh, travel, wow. I thought we were gonna see a foul on uh, Medeiros, but travel turns the ball over with exactly 90 seconds to play here in the third. We were a couple ticks shy of it when we went into the timeout. That was close to a foul as well. Didn't plant well, Perez, now they'll kick it out as Diamond did get the rebound. Tough shot, back to Perez. He hit the rim, so a fresh 30. On baseline, passing it back, kind of a blind pass and um, didn't turn out too well. M Mendez really didn't see it, it was a little off the mark. Diamond's gonna keep it. Into Mendez, quick, off the glass, nice job. Stolen on the inbounding pass. Madeiras flying in, blocked down low. It'll go out of play after Cumberbatch got the hands on it. Ross coming back in, and now uh, Bear coming back in as well. We'll see Pierre and uh, Lateo take a seat. Madeiras gets the pass. Well defended by Bear. Almost jarred loose. Keeps sticking the hands in there. And she's been able to kind of rattle it around a bit. Madeira sets gonna be wide to the left. Diamond has it back. Now loose ball on the court and a jump ball. Codega couldn't hang on to it. Diamond will keep it. Get it in, and they just do. Madeira was able to get free. Tipped away, still diamond ball. Bengals have kept it for over a minute here. Lofty pass, as Coach Brendan Kelly would say. Another jump ball, and this will turn it over to Blue Hills. So, kind of a tough sequence. I mean, credit the Warriors' defense there. But uh, Diamond just couldn't get the shot off. So shot clock is off. 20 seconds to play in the third. Blue Hills up by 12. 36-24. 
stolen, but with no time on the clock. So it's a good steal. It avoided a shot for Blue Hills, a potential quarter ending score, but Diamond again, uh, the deficit has grown here. Mind you, they led seven to five, so scoring was very low in that first quarter, but since then, Blue Hills has really put, down, put up some points. 15 points in the second, 16 here in the third. And the lead is 36 to 24 heading into the fourth quarter. Diamond was able to net 10 points in the third, their best offensive output of either of uh, any quarter to this point. But still a lot of work to do, not a lot of time to do it. Here we go, fourth quarter underway here at the James C. Ashley Gymnasium. Blue Hills looking to improve to nine and eight, holding that 12 point lead. The turnover for Diamond does not help the cause. Ross has had her way with this defense in the second half and she continues to impress for the Warriors. Another bad pass, another turnover and the speed of Ross slows up right at half court, almost backcourted it. Passing outside, set up for three. No good from Cumberbatch, who's knocked down four of them tonight. No good on that drive to the basket. The, I'm not sure what the Bengals defense was looking at there. They basically were flat-footed and still, as Cumberbatch made her way all the way through the paint, uncontested. Lucky that that one didn't fall. Loose ball, out of play. Reeled in by Watson, it was tipped off a couple Bengals fingertips. That's taken back, oh, and it's jarred loose. Stepped out of bounds. Kodiga couldn't slow herself up. Again, that kind of like, so in a, an example of kind of how things have gone tonight, right there. Diamond gets the steal, the breakaway, the ball, jars loose on the dribble, and then it took Kodiga out of bounds before she could get to the glass and try to lay it up. So it's not been, you know, clean offensively for Diamond tonight. And that was a great steal, too. Those breaks, you gotta have those. Cumberbatch, and it does go. That's her fifth from downtown. 18 points on the night. And it's 41 to 24. That's gonna go out of play. Two minutes gone here in the fourth. Bengals have not netted a basket. Kodiga tripped, Ross underneath for the basket, uncontested. That one sent toward the glass and well to the right of the basket. Now Ross pulls up. That's a beautiful shot right there. Man, Ross is having an incredible second half. It is a 21 point lead for Blue Hills. A nine point run to start the fourth. And that doesn't fall either. Kodega flying in, rips 
the ball away and takes the rebound, gives it to Madeiras. Now she gets it back and she is fouled. And it'll be just the second foul of the second half for either side. Blue Hills has them both. And it's on Isabel Bear. Inbounding pass, good to Rounds, and it's taken away, out of play. Oh, kept in an incredibly athletic play there from Rounds, but Blue Hills will still end up keeping it in the end. By my count, Ross has 19 points. She just came out of the game. I'm not sure if she's going to stay, if she's going to stay on the bench, or if we'll see her again. But man, an incredible second half for her. If it wasn't for her and Cumberbatch, it'd be a very different ball game for Diamond. But they have just completely devastated Diamond's defense tonight. They've had their way. Travel. That'll be Diamond ball. Foul called on Watson, her third. And she'll come out of the game now with three fouls. Halfway through the fourth. 45 to 24, Diamond has not netted a basket. Will this be it? No. Timeout on the floor, an injured player here in the fourth quarter. And I believe that is Jacqueline Pierre, number one, who just came in for Ross. Went down pretty hard. You see Diamond's athletic trainer there with her. We're going to step aside here in the injury timeout. We'll be back with the conclusion here on Fred TV. Stick around. Honor. Courage, sacrifice, pride, our city. Fall River has traditionally been in the forefront of honoring our nation's soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. Vietnam veterans took the initiative to secure rights to an 80% size replica of the Healing Wall for Veterans Bicentennial Park. The names of over 58,000 fallen heroes will be engraved on the 360 foot long replica wall. 100% of the money raised benefits the building of our Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Fall River. Help build our wall, which is scheduled to open in 2020. The meaning, the spirit, and the value of the wall is everyone's. Be part of this exceptional, once-in-a-lifetime project. To make a donation, please visit VietnamMemorialWall.org or connect with us at Facebook.com. It was indeed Jacqueline Pierre who was injured. Looked to be maybe an ankle as she was helped to her feet. I thought maybe her arm, but to be an ankle. And uh, so she's on the bench right now. And I wouldn't expect to see her back here with the lead the way it is. Subbing in for her was Margaret DeBordis Jackson, number 14. And now a travel right here in front of us, Eric Erickson. 
didn't keep the foot down. And that'll be the travel. So, um, needless to say, back to the action we go. And a foul. This is going to be Diamond's first foul here of the of the second half. And it's on rounds, her third. Cumberbatch, no good. She's gonna get it back. Fry back to Cumberbatch. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Able to keep it inbounds now. Mendez, no good. Doesn't even hit the, the basket, in fact. Never hit the rim. Diamond's second foul here. And it's on rounds again, now her fourth. Three ball, short. And it's out of play. Shea Hayes, number. 14 coming in off the bench, getting some minutes here. She got a nice cheer from the crowd. We tend to see that a lot, you know, in, in these basketball games, especially for a player who doesn't get a lot of minutes. Um, crowd tends to get behind them. Same thing, we see the same thing at Durfee as well, so that's always nice, the showing the support of everybody. Out of play again, and we will inbound again. Cumberbatch. Fourth foul on Mendez. Diamond up to three fouls. Two and a half to play. Cumberbatch driving the lane, hands it off. Comes back out, they kick it out to Fry. That's no good. Mendez gets the rebound, hands it off to Rounds, and they'll go down the court. Rounds able to kiss it off the glass, and it's Diamond's first basket here of the fourth. Almost six minutes into it, really tough fourth quarter for the Bengals. Still in play. Rosa didn't even look interested and it just kind of walked away for the Warriors. <laughs> I mean, it hit the bottom of the glass. It hit her off the shoulder. She shook her head and walked away from the ball. It was still in play. <laughs> One of the rare things we'll ever see. Been an interesting, uh, some weird things we've seen happen here tonight. Cumberbatch picking up her first foul. But that was like, one of the more extreme levels of disinterest. Out to Fry, now to Rosa. Kicking it out to Lewis. 90 seconds to play, stolen. Rounds, all alone, nobody there, and she'll put it down. as the bench is in for Coach McGrath here in these final 75 seconds. Travel. 
It's going to be a tough loss for Diamond because, uh, you know, for the conference, again, you know, they're, they're right there under 500 overall, but they should get into the tournament. But now they're going to kind of be in a must-win situation against Tri-County on Friday. They have not, they did not beat them in the first game. Um, and tonight, a very different story. Jump ball from the first game in Blue Hills, or at Blue Hills out in Canton. And Diamond won it. They put up 52 points in that game. Well, Blue Hills has certainly made some adjustments since then. Diamond couldn't hold on to it, got down the court and it was stripped away. Bear was able to get a hand in there. Now Lewis. Out to Fry. Stolen by Mendez. And Hayes will take it. She's gonna take two shots. We're not done yet. 16 and a half seconds on the clock. Blue Hills picks up their fourth foul. And it'll be the third on Lewis, who hasn't really played much since the first quarter when she actually started the game, but I haven't seen much playing time since. First shot, no good. Amazingly, this is only the third trip to the line for Diamond tonight. So that means that out of the 10 fouls that Blue Hills has committed in the game, only three have been on a basket. All seven of them have been on the floor. 10 seconds to play, loose ball, out of bounds. So the heel there from Lewis just on the orange, and the orange is out of bounds. So 7.9, Diamond will take the last shot for Pride here. No good. And Blue Hills takes a rather convincing win here on the road. Diamond with some serious offensive woes against the Warriors the second time around. And uh, again, we'll have their work cut out against Tri-County on Friday. So please, again, you know, stay tuned to our Fred TV Sports Facebook page. If you're not connected with us, please do. We'll have all the tournament pairings posted on there as they are announced within the next week to 10 days. All right, 45 to 28, Diamond with just a four-point fourth quarter. Not a way to close out a game that you're trailing. So a tough night for the Bengals offensively. they got some work to do, um, but Blue Hills with a convincing win here on the road, 45-28. Nick Dolan running camera tonight. Nice job, Nick. I'm Evan Massoud saying so long from Diamond.